Quite simply, we're a football team that chooses when our best is required. Um, and that responsibility falls upon me. Uh, I think when you, when you go back and when you watch the film, and you talk to our guys in the aftermath of the game, uh, and then you step away and you analyze our season, um, I think that's the thing that stands out more than anything. Uh, we talked about really two challenges in the lead up to the game a week ago. The, the challenge was one, was to play better coming out of a bye week than we had. Challenge two was to play better against the, co the competition we were facing than we had um, in the Central Michigan game. And obviously we did not step up to that challenge. When you, when you, when you look for similarities, uh, we mentioned, could we even talk about it after the game on Saturday, about coming off of the bye. We, we changed our bye week structure. Um, I do the same thing in terms of how we practice um, in, the, in the lead up to the FIU game. The difference is, is that the, the, the pattern is, goes beyond the bye because the pattern of what we saw on Saturday night is the same pattern that showed up in the Georgia Tech game. Um, it's the same pattern that showed up in the Central Michigan game that was not following a bye. Um, Quite simply, we just did not have the, 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 the respect of the opposition that we have. And again, that, that is up to myself to make sure that that's something that we have every week. When we play, we're pretty dang good. Um, when we don't play, we're pretty awful. And we were, we were awful on, um, on Saturday. Um, fortunately, we have another opportunity to, to, to get back out there and to play. Uh, we've got a challenge going up to Duke. Um, and it is imperative for our guys to, to come together and, and find a way to, as much as possible, put what happened last Saturday behind us. And with that, I'll open up for questions. Oh, hey, Manny. Um, I want to ask you, you know, I know you've talked about this, some of this stuff, but like bigger picture, how, how hard is this fix? Because, you know, other coaches have tried, you know, and now you're getting your shot. Like how hard is the fix for the program to get it how you want it? And that's aside from just the incoming recruiting class, like, you know, you know better than anybody what has to happen. So can you talk about that a little bit, what, what you think has to happen for this to get turned around? There is a, there is a culture that has been um, embedded here in some way, shape, or form, despite who the coach has been for a while. And that, is, and that to me, is what we're trying to battle against. Um, and you've heard me say some of the words, some of the, the, the buzzwords in terms of what helped, what we're trying to, to accomplish. Some of those things, um, to be very honest, are coming from the lessons of this season. You know, when, when, you know, in life, when the same thing keeps presenting to you, there's a lesson that you have to learn from it. And that, and that to me, is how I look at our year. Um, you know, can we look at this as an opportunity to learn from this and understand, like, how a season has to be addressed and how a season has to be attacked? Um, that's our challenge. I'd like to say I hope so, but honestly, but that, that is the challenge. Um, but going forward, some of the guys, some of this is a, is a recruiting profile thing. You know, the type of, the type of guys we bring into the program, it's, it's a, it, is, it is about building a culture of sustained excellence. And, you know, and again, I can't sit here today and, and act like we're any closer to that than we were nine months ago. But, the, but in terms of Establishing what we're wanting to establish and laying the found work and, 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 and the, the foundation of that, those things are going on right now. And, um, and we've seen that. And that's what, we, and that's what we've seen. I and mean, we, were, we, were, we were just sat here and we would have talked about it two weeks ago coming off of the Louisville game when everybody assumed that, you know, everything was trending in the opposite direction. Um, so why is it that when we see a team when we don't ex that we don't think that our best is required that makes us choosers? That makes us choose we choose. We choose when, when, when we need to and we don't need to. And that's not all of them, but that was enough of them on Saturday um, to put us in a position to get, to get beat. Manny, the two fourth downs, the one where you put the offense back on the field after they mm -hmm. jumped off for the field goal, and then I think it was the pass out to the left. Yes, both the fourth and ones. Right. What, when you looked at those, one, was I seeing things, or was Mike Harley completely uncovered on yeah, one they, of them? Yeah, they, they were misaligned, which is actually why the, the play was stopped on the first one. That's correct. Yeah. And, and did, did Jaron just not see that? Is it, does, he, does he have the ability to audible if he sees something? Like, I, don't, yeah, I don't know if Jaron saw the uncovered wide receiver on that play, which actually put an, an extra guy in the box um, you know, to, to handle the run. Um, and then on, the, on the, the second, fourth, and one, we had Irvin wide open in the flat and just didn't, just didn't see him out there, you know. And, and again, it's, it's all the, um, 
you know, when you lose by six, it's obviously you say, well, those are those are six points right there. But but fourth and one at the one is, you know, all the signs say that's an always go. Um, and then our defense did not do a great job of, of getting a three and out when we had them down there. We made them punt. But I think when our offense got the ball back, instead of that being around midfield, it was around like our 20 yard line, something like that. So it was it was a poor uh, exchange of events there. Manny, with getting the culture you want set here um, after 11 months now, do you feel like you need to reevaluate maybe uh, your approach um, with getting the culture that needs to be set here, or like, do you do you feel like you need to make changes yourself in, in oh, establishing? That's, yeah, that's a fantastic question. In terms of the, the the culture and what we're doing and how we're doing it, that's sound. And the reason why, and I've said this before in here, that the reason why that sounded, that, that's not my, it's not my ideas. What we're building this program on is not just some things that I just, you know, pulled out of thin air. These are things that I've won here um, um, through the years and have stood the test of time. Um, in terms of my approach, when I have to self-evaluate is, is my messaging to the team and my demeanor to the team and my demeanor of practice in games where we, the, where we are the apparent favorite, right? Because that's what's, that's what the season is saying. Does the season say we're resilient? It does because we've, you know, we've come back from three and four. We've come back from big deficits in games. Does the season say, um, you know, we're a mentally tough football team? It says all those things. Those are the things in the culture that, you know, to the to the question earlier, that are being established. So what is it? What is what is what's been? You know, where where's your blind spot? Well, obviously, what showed up on Saturday is our blind spot is when there's an expectation to win, right? Now, as part of that, an immaturity of a football team. You, you could argue that, but, but I've got a cell phone that. And so to me, you, you, you go back and you look at everything in terms of, you know, how you speak on a team, your demeanor of practice, um, the way that you're, I mean, the way that you may address something even on a game day walkthrough um, to help create an edge so that, you know, it doesn't ever look like that again. Manny, DJ Dallas's elbow, is he indeed out for the season, meaning uh, last year? You know, I don't have actually the, the – the prognosis of the timetable for recovery. I do know that um, the latest I heard is that it may not need surgery, which is really good. And it, I think of all of, of, it could have been a lot worse than what it sounds like. But again, I don't know exactly how many weeks the recovery would be. Oh, sort of along those same lines. I want to ask you, um, I guess Lorenzo Ling Lingard, could he play now? I mean, is he available? Uh, yes. You Okay, so do you anticipate him getting into games now? Because he has these last couple games. That's definitely, that's definitely a possibility, yep. Okay. Manny, two questions. First off, Tate Martell, I guess I don't think he was at the game on Saturday. I know you guys have brought up in the past that he's been dealing with things off the field. Is there a chance he's going to leave the team? Uh, and I guess what sort of his status? And then my second question is you mentioned that these issues go beyond the coaches, you know, the coaches that have been here before in terms of, the mentality and the you know the attitude towards being favorite. Do you? I mean, is this like a psychological thing where you you bring in a, a psychologist to speak to the team? Because obviously there's a message you keep delivering over and over again. Hey, we got to get up. We got to be ready for these opponents. But does this sort of go beyond even what you could do to get these guys to show up? It's not. And, and when, when, let me go back. When I talk about before, I'm not talking about necessarily you know losing games you should win or things like that. Um, we've just we've 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 been stuck. Right in this in this level of, of trying to get back up now for a large number of years, right? That that's more the cycle I've been trying that we're trying to break out of. Um, in terms of the, the, your, the your second part of the the psychology of it, I think the messaging and and, and the, the the discussion and the head knowledge was there. Like we we were fully aware of the issue going into the game, and yet. We still played like that. As a coach, what then that comes down to is a level of accountability in, pre in preparation. So to me, what I think what, you know, what has to change is the way that we're preparing. And when we see things, um, so for example, if we, you know, if, there, if there's a play in practice where, you know, something happens not to the standard of what it should happen, um, that's getting corrected. In practice, not like, hey, that's okay. Um, but maybe the manner in, in terms of which it's being corrected and the, the, the discipline that comes 
especially on those weeks, to make sure that there is an edge to our performance of, I'm sorry, to our preparation ahead of our performance, you know? I mean, I mean the clues have to be found somewhere in the preparation, and they are. And we can go back to the coaching staff and talk about some things that we saw the week prior. And, it's, and again, it's not like those things were applauded and clapped out, but, but the, the simplest thing we know in, in, in coaching is, you know, it's about discipline. You know, it's about you get what you demand and you encourage what you tolerate. You know, so again, if, if it's just, you know, if it's a coach yelling and screaming and that's not getting the job done, then we have to up our level of discipline in terms of the accountability when there's things that we don't see and we don't like in practice. And that's simply just what, that's what's coaching. That's why I said, that's why it all comes back. This is not like, you know, I'm not trying to sound any way other than upfront and honest. That's why that all comes back on me. We have got to discipline our guys better for showing errors in our preparation for any game, but for sure these games were were favored. And then to your Tate Martell question, um, Tate came to me midweek last week, um, felt like he needed another, you know, personal leave. Um, we decided together that it would probably be better just to go ahead and take this one in the Duke game and sit out um, instead of just being in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, and he also reiterated that Miami is where he wants to be, um, doesn't want to leave. And, and, you know, but he's just got, he's got to resolve these issues and, and, and we support him in that. May just to follow up on what you just said about the discipline, what, what does that look like uh, in your mind? What does that mean? Or maybe what's been done that you'd like to see maybe corrected or does it start as soon as this week in practices? So the discipline of, of something in practice, for example, well, like for, like, for example, it may, it may be, it could be so many different things. It could be, you know, um, repeating a play however many times until you get it right. You know, I mean, we're, we're limited in terms of time. You can't do some things you used to do um, in the olden days, you know. Um, it could be, you know, it could be um, running. It could be up-downs. It could be, and, and actually, and the thing it could be, it could be reduced playing time, right? I mean, I mean you know, the bench is what is – speaks louder than anything, you know, but I think that's where, you know, amping up. And, and, and I think this goes to the point where the issue of time and the issue of recruiting at times is until you can create enough competition for the spots, okay, which is what every former great here has always talked about back in, you know, in the day in Miami, is there was always that competition for places and guys were always fearful. We've had so many former players come speak to our team and they addressed the fear they had of losing their spot because they knew that there was a guy right behind them who was just as good. And the reality is we don't have that. Not at every spot. We have that at some, but for sure not at every spot. So it's very hard to have that edge every day if you don't fear for your playing time. Now, what we have to do is we have to create that fear, whether it's whether there is a, an actual like behind that young man or not. Because quite simply, without it, you're going to get beat. And that's where until you, you can continue to bring in the recruiting classes that we want to bring in and get the roster the way that it was here. And I think that speaks more towards the cycle of way things have been here over the last 15 years or whatever it's been more than anything else. Is once you lose that competition for 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 the, 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 the places on the depth chart, you lose a little bit of that edge of what kind of team you're gonna see every week. If this is the dumbest question ever, I apologize going in, in advance, but in a weird way, does the past, does the storied past here, does it kind of hurt when you're trying to build, like when Al had your job, he hated use of the word swagger. He didn't want swagger talked about, he wanted it earned only and not looking back at that era. And, it just seems like there's only two ways for things to go around here. Either it's going to be 2001 level or it's, it's this, and there's rarely the, the in-between. It, it does asking kids or giving kids the belief that they can play to the absolute greatest teams to ever play here, to play to that standard, in a weird way, does, do you find that almost puts too much weight on them? And when it doesn't go that way, then it all just kind of falls in? It's not a, it's, that's not a dumb question, first of all. I think, I think it's actually, I think you're onto something there. Number one, it's not a, it's not a burden. You want that standard. You want to be at a place where, where that is the standard. Um, what I find that troubles us at times, and I think got us this past week, is when things get good 
around here, which, and again, you know, a, a three-game winning streak shouldn't be good. I mean, that, it was just, but even that, when, 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 when the sun does come out here, um, I, think, I think our team picks up on the natural arrogance that we have. And, 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 and I'm guilty as well, where we say, well, we should, you know, we, we're, we're doing well. We are kind of more closer to those, you know, not into the Miami back narrative, but like, yeah, like, you know, hey, we're getting this thing rolling. We're going to be Miami again and forgetting what it takes to make that happen. And so I think that natural arrogance that we have when things are good to associate ourselves with, forget about the national championship teams, but just the good times uh, can take our eye off the ball. We took our eye off the ball this past week. And that's not to discredit the way that FIU played. They certainly played very hard and very well, better than they had. But but I do think there's some of that. You know, now to your point of, of the massive extremes of the ups and downs, look, that's that's on us. We gotta get our program to not play to these extremes of ups and downs. And and so the expectation, um, the standard is not bothersome, you know. I think the arrogance gets us. You know what I mean? I think the arrogance gets us where there's an expectation where we feel like because, you know, um, because of how we remember the team to be, that we feel like we should beat all these other teams because we feel like they're not on our program's level. But until our program gets built back to the level that it was, to your point, um, how can you assume anything? How can we assume anything at the University of Miami right now? We can't. Um, and it's my responsibility to make sure our football team never does again. After uh, watching the film, how would you assess what happened to Jaron, he was playing great uh, the previous two games. And in addition, I guess, how do you feel like he does, he's understanding as a young quarterback, how do you feel like he's done uh, when faced with adversity this season, maybe having to fight through some slow starts or, or whatever it yeah. may be? Well, obviously our passing game was, was substandard for the first three quarters of the game. Um, and the turnovers, where they were on the field, um, you know, field position had been something we had dominated the three weeks prior. Uh, we were minus 130, I think, this week uh, because of the, 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 the interceptions. Um, we didn't play very well. We, we, didn't, we didn't throw the football very well. Um, and, you know, I thought Jaron stood out there and, and hung in there and battled in the fourth quarter. But I'm going to keep saying the same thing with, with young players. It goes back to their preparation, you know, and it goes back to what, it, you know, and, and, and the, 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 we have, when, when we think things are going to be easy, that's when they get you, you know? And, and so is it a young guy, you know, six touchdown passes, you know, you know, we've arrived or whatever. Is there a little bit of a dip in preparation? That's a question that, you know, only he knows, um, you know, we have certain ways to measure that, but that's, that, that's, a, that's what he has to learn out of this. And that's why part of this, look, it sucks. Um, but you have two choices. You, 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 in, the, the proper choice is that you got to learn from it, you know. Either let it, you know, you, you let it define you, and you let it sink you, or you learn from it and you improve on it. And that's that's the expectation that we have to have for him and everybody else going forward. Manny, you, you bring up the arrogance and how you know you're you're partially responsible for that as well. Correct. Um, I look at the program and I think turnover chain. You know the tweets that you guys send out when you land recruits that commit. It seems like it's bragging or, or, you know, sort of pounding, you know, a little bit of swagger or whatever, the old Kane swagger. Do you at all have to maybe take a step back from, from some of that, you think, as a team to maybe send the message of, hey, you know, we're not that, the old Miami yet, the one that was winning championships. Is there, is there something to that as well, maybe the way that you guys carry yourselves in, in that regard? Well, we'll never be, as you know, we'll never be defined as the old Miami until there's another national championship. That's just, you know, the old are you back and whatever. That's just, that's just one that is, you know. Um, but you also can't play afraid and you can't play safe pool. We're Miami. We, we don't hide very well. You know what I mean? Now, I don't think we're doing anything from a recruiting standpoint and, and the things you mentioned with tweets and whatever. Remember, we, we, we live in our fishbowl here, so we have a, you know, a, a proximity bias, but that's college football. I mean, the thing is, those things are occurring, and where the you know the turnover chain that's still uniquely Miami, that's still uniquely a part of, of who we are, and um, so I mean, to me, I think that's that's just part of our culture, you know. But but again, I think we said this before, and and and, and everybody nodded the head. Miami plays better when Miami plays like Miami, 
And if you understand what, you, what I mean, then you understand what I mean by that. And, and so look here, let's, let's, and I guess this is the, the, the way I'll, I'll end up this point. Let's make the main thing the main thing, which means let's just play a lot better. You know what I mean? We're not spending our time in here focusing on chains and tweets and things like that. We're focusing on, on, on getting a program right, and our guys are working very, very hard. Um, and that's why we were let down by our, our performance on Saturday. So to me, all that is, all that's happening, whether it, that it appears that way or not, all that's going on on the inside. Manny, <clears throat> excuse me, do you feel like in, in your meeting with the players last night that they really understood your message, what you're telling us, um, especially going into Duke? What's the biggest challenge of that, you know, uh, beyond their attitudes? And, and also, when you were talking about Tate, you said we decided together that it would probably be better to take this one in the Duke game. And ask, he, he was not at FIU, correct? Right. Okay. Um, and um, the other thing, I just want to make sure I get it right. DJ Dallas, WQAM, reported that he had a dislocated elbow. I don't want to write the wrong thing. Is that correct? You know, I don't know what I don't know what the official term of what happened to his elbow okay. is. So I, I don't want to I, I don't want to misspeak either. Okay. So what was the other thing? What, what, what else? What else were we talking about? Ta I got confused. You said Duke with Tate. But yeah. FIU and Duke. Right. right. No, I think they absolutely did, because the trends, you know, like we like we talk about when, when we meet, everything we we speak to the team about, we show the team about. We can either show on on we either show back up with data or video, so it's not just coach speaking, coach talk. Um, the data is obvious in this, right? I mean, that, and that's what I'm saying. The trends you can't ignore the trends um, in both directions when we're really really good and when we're really really bad. Um, and sometimes we've been really, really good and, and really, really bad in the same game. Um, and why is that? Um, and it goes directly to how we prepare for these games where we feel like we're, you know, the favorite. You know, we, 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 we're having a hard time handling prosperity, which is silly because we don't really have, we have not had enough prosperity around here to be over, overcome it. But guess what? It got us. It got us. And so that to me is the lesson from this going forward. Perfect. I mean, it, it, but it, and, and, that, and, and that's the point. And what we always try to say is, does that matter in terms of how you prepare for a game? Does it really matter? Does the opponent really matter? Right? It shouldn't. And the thing is, and this is, again, where I always come back full circle. Why? Because it's your player accountability. Because any substandard pre uh, preparation by you sinks all of us. And that's why on a team, when a team loses, not everybody on that team did not prepare to play great. Not everybody on that team played poorly on Saturday, but enough guys did and everyone loses because of it. You know, so again, when, when it goes, what, you know, part of what, you know, we keep talking about these things about building cultures and, and getting this, it's got to filter into the locker room. You know what I mean? It's got to come into the locker room where the locker room starts policing the locker room and guys start carrying it in there. And that's slowly happening. We have some guys that are doing that, but that's, that's going to be the thing. It should, did I want it to happen sooner? Of course I want it to happen sooner. But we're going through what we have to go through. I said it a week ago, even when, when, when we were, you know, again, like I said, it was a lot sunnier outside. The things we're going through this year, we've had to go through. As much as it sucks and I wish we didn't, we have got to go through this. The key is, is that we have to learn from it. Okay, thank you all.